Welcome back. Winsome Sears broke barriers two years ago when she became the first black woman and the first naturalized female citizen, also the first female veteran elected to statewide office in Virginia. Back in August, she released a book, How Sweet It Is, Defending the American Dream, about her personal faith and political journey. Shannon sat down with the lieutenant governor in the state capital of Richmond. It's today's Sunday special. You have the most fascinating life story. In your new book, we get all of the details, but you talk about coming from Jamaica, six years old with your dad, you were immigrants to this country. Did you ever think you'd end up joining the Marines, which you weren't even a citizen when you did that, go yeah. on to be a business owner? Did you see all those opportunities here? What was your thought about coming here as a youngster from another country? Well, of course, it starts with my dad, and it was his vision for a better life, where he could restart his life, actually, and he only came with a dollar seventy-five, and if you want to really put it into something you can picture, seven quarters. How do you start your life? Seven quarters, a stranger in a strange land, and you come at the height of the civil rights movement just, what, 17 days before Dr. King gave his I Have a Dream speech as a black man. And first of all, you applied to come. You begged to get into the country. So. With his vision, of course, it led to my coming. He came and got me after he had stabilized himself, and now here I am. And so I'm not even first-generation American. I am still the little girl who came off the plane, the Pan-American plane. Yeah, I, I remember those days. Yeah. Um, and through that, you started to build a life here. And I remember you saying that you felt like the education system here was weaker than compared mm -hmm. to what you were experiencing, the academic challenges that you got yes. in Jamaica. What was your assessment of where we are as a country on education? Because I know it's something that you still are fighting for, charter schools yeah. and other opportunities. Yeah, so education is what lifted my father out of poverty after his doll of 75. I mean, he took any job he could find and used that money to put himself through school, started his career, and now he's comfortably retired. I have to find my own way in the world, and so education is what did it for me. Education will lift all of us, and that's why I pushed so hard for education, because without an education, you will get nowhere, and you'll get there very fast, and we see it in the statistics that are coming out. Our children are not learning, and that's why we're saying, let's do all of the above. You know, when the slaves um, were, were getting their freedom, three things they wanted. First, their freedom, yes. Then they wanted their families reunited, and then they wanted their education. And you think about it, right after the Civil War, 1865, maybe 20 or so years later, just maybe 20 years, you see we had Black Wall Street right here mm -hmm. in Richmond, was the first Black Wall Street. Then we had Oklahoma. And how did they do it? As black people, just a little bit removed from slavery, it was education. And in fact, that's why the master did not want the slaves to learn how to read and write, because they could literally write their own ticket to freedom, let this man free, and they could go off. So that's why I have to push for education. I say public schools, charter schools, all of the above, and private school, homeschool. Do you know that black parents are the fastest growing segment of homeschoolers? So it's all of the above. I'm not going to stand in the way of any parent who wants whatever it is for their child when it comes to education, especially. You talked a lot about your own journey uh, as an immigrant to this country, but that of black Americans as well, and kind of some people expecting you to hold this mantle of you're black, you're conservative, to be a spokesperson for that particular yeah. viewpoint. But you've said you think that the GOP needs to do a better job of reaching all people, yeah. um, including different um, voting blocks and backgrounds of people who may not think that they actually have a lot in common with conservatives. Yeah. Um, and you've said there are people within the GOP who are not giving you a good name with black voters. So where do you think the GOP is on that spectrum? Well, what, what I really consider is that, and I, and I say to the GOP, is you do not cede any vote. You, you must go after every vote. Uh, I, I did not know that I was conservative until I heard a message. And then I realized, wait a minute, I, what I believe and how I'm thinking about certain political parties don't ring true. And so that's why you're, you're seeing now, I think, more black voters, Latino voters, and Asian voters, immigrants, they're, they're considering the GOP as a possibility. Uh, there, there is a, uh, well, you know, I'm for lower taxes. Um, I am for, for example, um, not just a certain type of education, but for education for all. 
I'm not for quotas, you know, I, I'm for the right to work. I, I want to keep my money and as much of it in my pocket that I work for, you know. There, there's, there's certain things that are conservative in nature, and we just don't know that we are that way. And by the way, I'm not trying to get all black people to be Republicans. I'm just saying we need political parties to, to, to leave us alone, and we will do what we want to do. But we don't need political saviors. You've talked to about this GOP field that is now vying for the nomination for 2024, and you said they're really beating each other up, and you'd like to see less of that. Mm -hmm. You've also talked openly about President Trump and said that you don't think it's good for the country for him to run again. But it looks like at this moment, unless something changes, mm -hmm. he's probably going to be the GOP nominee. What does that mean for the party and more broadly for the country, if he is? Well, I am considering, again, that I could not support President Biden. I mean, as a Marine, you know, the way that he pulled us out of Afghanistan, uh, so many Marine blood was spilled there in addition to sailors and soldiers. And uh, inflation is killing us. I was at the grocery store the other day, and uh, last week, in fact, and bought a few things, and the sales clerk said, $40. $40, my God, what did I buy? But I could see that she had been the, through this before, so I paid the money and walked off. And just like any other person, I'm thinking, inflation is killing us. And so we've tried to do a few things differently here in Virginia with the gas tax and, well, the state portion, getting rid of it so that people would have more money. The billions that we have returned to the taxpayers here in Virginia, we'd like to do more of that. But so I couldn't uh, vote for the President Biden. At the same time, you can't call people vermin. You know, you can say that they're evil. You can say that, uh, you know, they're, they're divisive, some other things, but you can't call them vermin. And uh, I'm a Christian first, before I'm anything else. And I don't want to be a stumbling block to anyone. And so um, the Apostle Paul said, well, he said, when I was a child, I spake like a child. I acted like a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. That's what I'd like to see. And equally, I did not agree with Hillary when she said that certain of us were irredeemable. We're not irredeemable. What we want is less drama. What we want is for the country to heal, because you see what's going on around us, and we need someone who can bring us together. And a lot of folks are having that conversation about Virginia as well. Obviously, uh, Governor Youngkin is going to be term limited with one term here in Virginia. You and he both have said when you're asked about your future, let's get through these elections here <laughs> in statewide elections in Virginia. Those are over. Did score the big wins that Republicans had hoped for. So first of all, the question is, why do you think that's the case? And secondly, what is your political future with those now behind you? Yeah. So I am always saying that the way forward is forward. There's nothing back there. We can learn from it and move forward. So what we do know is that we actually picked up a Senate seat. We're not really even talking about that. We were down and we've picked up one. And yes, the results are not what we wanted them to be. But we're not licking any more wounds. We're going forward because we have to have a hope. We have to give hope to our children. We know that the Democrats outspent us $110 million to the $77 million that we raised. Think about that. For state Senate races and state delegate races, that's amazing to me, $110 million. So, Money helps because then it helps to bring the message out. And it would have been a worse bloodbath, actually but a bloodbath, period, if the governor had not gone through uh, this initiative that he was calling Secure Your Vote Virginia because we were able to bring out absentee voters. Uh, we call them, uh, they normally only vote in presidential races or gubernatorial races, and uh, 500,000 of them. Five hundred, imagine losing 500,000 customers. You can't do that and win. You can't do that and stay in business. So these were the, those are the people we were trying to reach, and we got enough of them, but not enough. And we know that the Democrats are three to four years ahead of us on absentee voting. We're just going to have to keep plowing through, plowing through. Will your name be on that gubernatorial ballot the next time? Well. We do have sessions starting in January, and that's what I'm focused on. We have to get through certain ideas. Um, we have to get through a common sense agenda. The bills are coming through, and some of them are so far left. It's, it's just not going to be good. But we will work together, one Virginia, and get through it. Because guess what? Campaigns are done. It is time to govern. 
Lieutenant Governor, thank you. Thank you. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.